if you believe in Christ, if you are somebody who is following the doctrines of Christ, you will be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the person who is teaching you, the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, is better. That means the person is more elevated. The person has more material blessings, physical blessings, and spiritual blessings than you. If your pastor is richer than you, your pastor is more powerful than you, then you have been deceived. Then that your pastor has deceived you. If you come to Christ, the elites among Christians in the church, the elites, the servants, are the ministers, the apostles. They are the elites. In fact, they are the ones who depend, they, they, they depend upon you. If you are not even giving to your pastor, that pastor will be empty. The pastor will have nothing. If you are not giving both spiritual protection, you are not giving material help, giving money to the person, supplying the person with material protection through your prayers, that person is finished. That pastor. Listen to what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Look at the verse 9. He said, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, from verse 9. Particularly, look at the verse 9. He said, I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last. As it were appointed to death. We are the last. We are the ones who are facing every death bulletin. That's what he's saying. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Before angels and men, they are just make a spectacle. They are the ones who are seen as the down trodden among men and angels. He said, we are fools for Christ's sake, but we are wise in Christ. We are weak, but we are strong. We are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. They don't even have houses. We labor, working with our hands, being revived with breast, being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world and are the us calling of all things unto this day. But then he said in verse 14, I write not this thing to shame you, that your pastors are that so kind of situations. But as my beloved sons, I warn you, warn you that nobody should come and say, I'm a minister of God, so I have to be better than you. That you think your pastor or your apostle or your that you who is more anointed than you. If you are thinking like that, you are deceived. Look at the scene here. You know Jesus Christ, the Lord, our Lord himself. When he came onto the earth, he said, I am among you as a servant. He was washing people's feet. And this is what he told the apostles. He said this to the apostles. In Luke chapter 22, listen to what he told the apostles. In here, when in the last day when he was with them, Luke chapter 22, when we begin from, I want to read some few portions from Luke chapter 22. Let's start from place here. From verse 27 will be good. Now let's start from verse 24. There was a strife, Luke 22, from verse 24. There was a strife, strife among the apostles. They were saying, who should be the greatest among us? And then Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles, that is the heathens of the world, the unbelievers, those kings among them exercise lordship over them, over the citizens. And they that exercise authority upon them are called the benefactors. So in the world, among unbelievers, 
the kings, the presidents, those who are head institutions, the foremen, the managers, the directors, the, the, the CEOs, and those people, they are the ones who gain over the people. That is the system which Satan has set in the world. That those who are in authorities over the world, they are the ones who benefit. The citizens are just deprived of all things. So when you are going to a company or you're working in a company, the managers, the directors, the, the, the managing team, the, those who are at the top, they are the ones who end fat, big. And those who are at the bottom, they have nothing. That is the system of Satan, Satan on in the earth, on earth. But he said, verse 26, Luke 22, Jesus said, But you shall not be so. But he that is greater than man, you let him be a younger, and he that is chief, as the one who saved. For who, 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 whether who is greater, he that sits at meat table, or he that serves, it's not he that sits at the table, the one who is being seated, and the one who is being served. Which one is greater? If you go to a restaurant and you are seated, because you have your money, there are waiters who come to serve you food. Why you pay them? Because they are working for you. Who was a customer is coming to eat there and pay them so that they can get their salaries. So they serve you. Then Jesus is saying that the one who is sitting and eating and the one who is serving, which one is greater? He said, he that is sitting, isn't it? The one who is eating. But I am among you as he that serves. Jesus came as a servant to serve the church. That's what he was describing to the apostles. The are sent the word apostle means messenger and there's no way that you can say that a messenger is greater than the one who is receiving the message messengers are sent to send message to people you can't say that the messengers are greater than those they are coming to send good messages the message jesus when he came into the world he said i'm the only begotten son of god i'm giving to the world not to dine with you but to suffer, to give my life, to save you. Now look at it this way. God, giving his only begotten son, to die to save a people. So which of them is greater? The one he's saving or the one who died? Even though Jesus is the greater, but in the eyes of God, he didn't even consider the life of Jesus. He's considering the life of those, he, those in the world he's coming to die for. Their life is, is more concerned to God than the, son, the life of his own son. So that is how God has given everyone who he sent into the world to preach the gospel. He said, when you go and preach the gospel to them, those who receive, they will cast out devils. They who receive your gospel, they will cast out devils. Mark chapter 15, verse 16. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. The chapter is 16, the verses from 15 to 18. Not the preachers. Those who receive the preaching, they are the ones who have, God will give them the power to cast out devils. These apostles could not cast one devil. And Jesus told them that because they don't believe. Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 and 20. They asked him, why don't we cast that thing away? He said, because you don't believe. But he's telling them that those who receive the gospel they are preaching, they will cast out devils, so not them. They could not, but they who receive, because the power to cast out the devils is given to the believers who hear the gospel, not the preachers. That is why if a pastor is not recognizing the power of the members, he will only become a thief. He doesn't, you cannot get anything. It is the members who are supposed to pray for the pastor. They have that power to cast out devils, not the pastor. If the pastor wants to be strong himself, 
Maybe if he doesn't have anybody there, then he has to be strong himself to do that himself. Right everywhere, right from the Old Testament, when the priests were given, the Levites, the reason why they were given the tithe is that they, are, they were not supposed to earn anything in life. They, they were the poorest among the people. So the tithe was their only means of life. So if you don't give it to them, they will, they will, they will curse you. That is what some pastors are doing today. Because they are not teaching their members the power which God has put into them, into the members, those who are hearing. And they are making themselves, they, the pastors, are making themselves as if they are the greatest. Meanwhile, they are suffering. They come to the church and try to say all sorts of things to put fear in the members so that they can give their money to them instead of telling them that, look, this is what we are. If you are not praying for less, pray for less. Can you imagine the Apostle Paul asked prayers? Pray for less. They said because we are resting again, not fresh and blood, but again, principality and powers. So take up the sword of the spirit, the word of God, and pray for less. The word of God we have preached to you, take it. Pray all kinds of prayer and pray for less. Ephesians 6 from verse 12, then 17 to 19. Verse 19, Apostle Paul said, pray for less. Second Corinthians chapter 1, he said, we, we, we even want to commit suicide, but we depend on your prayers. He said they went to Asia and the things they faced there, if not because of their prayers, they would even they themselves or kill themselves. We said they didn't want, they didn't even want they didn't want to leave. So it was the prayers of, he was praying for the church, that the church will know the love of Christ, that they will have all the fullness of God in them. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 1. He started, so that when I hear your faith, I start to pray for you that you know the hope of the calling in you, you hope the power of God in you, the inheritance that in you, with the power which the fire above every principality and power above every name. He wants them to know the, the, the believers to know the power. Because if the believers know the power, they, the ministers, will also have their peace. Because God has occasion that that power should be in the church, in the members. So if you are preaching to them, you have to preach this power to them so that the pastor too can also benefit. In the Old Testament, the Levites had nothing. If the people of Israel are not giving tithe to them, they will die of hunger. Nothing will come to their hand. God will not give them anything. They depend on the tithe. Today, it has not changed. But pastors don't depend on tithe because we are not Levites. In Isaiah 61, Jesus said, I come to preach the gospel to you. That's what he quoted in Luke chapter 4 from verse 18. Now that Isaiah 61, he said, those who receive the gospel, not those who preach. Those who receive the gospel. Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. Mark 16, 17. The same way as Stewart said, those who receive the gospel, they will repair old ways. They will build cities. They will eat the riches of the Gentiles. So if the members are not prosperous, the pastors will suffer. So if the pastors, the apostles are not preaching to the members, the power of God in them, and they rather make them so that they are anointed, throw their hand and cast people to the ground, they will suffer. They will live in a country where bandits will take over. They will live in a country when kidnappers, when terrorists, when greedy politicians will destroy the life of the people because the power of God is in the members, not in the pastors who are just parading themselves as if they are Hollywood stars. They are nothing. Apostle Paul says something. His main concern is to preach the power of God to the people. That their power, their faith will not depend on human beings. 1 Corinthians 2. But in the power of God in them. God is very important. And he said, I do not come to take your money. It's not about money. 
I did not convert after anybody's money. Ah, chapter 20, verse 33 and 35. Ah, 20, 33 and 35. I do not need any money from you. First Corinthians chapter 9. When we start reading from the verse, first Corinthians 7 to 18, first Corinthians chapter 9. He said, yes, he's giving that when we are praying, you also should give us something. Because we sow spiritual things to you, you also have to give us But that is not what I'm preaching. I'm preaching the gospel. What be time if I'm preach it? Because if you don't, if you don't let the members to get the gospel and you start to sell it to them, you, the pastor too, and the citizens of the nations are going to suffer because it is these believers, those who receive the gospel, the pure gospel, that can save their nations, that can cast the devils away, that can stand against these serpents, that can bring recovery to the, to, to the people. If you begin to, pastors who are selling the gospel to them, who are preaching this falsehood and making themselves like holy wolves pass, they are the cause of the destructions in the world and they will pay for it. When Christ returns, they will have their reward. That was why Jesus is telling the scribes and Pharisees, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, woe unto you. Woe unto these people. Because when you deny the believers the truth of the gospel, you are bringing destruction to the people. Because these people are those who have the power to cast out these devils. They have the power to help you, the pastor. If the members are not rich and prosperous, you, the pastor too, will suffer because God has made in such a way when Jesus even himself came, he came to give all his life to the church that the church can help him. What I do, you can do. If Christ can do everything, can help this world, then he will not even die. He will help this world. But he needs these sons of God. He needs them. At, especially at this time, they are much, much needed at this particular time to destroy wickedness. And this, this power to destroy this wickedness is not found in the pastors or the apostles. It's found in the believers. So if you are not teaching them well, if you're a pastor, apostle, whatever, bishop, whatever, and you continue to deceive these people and make yourself, not, look at that, the whole apostle Paul. Making himself, Philippians chapter 4, when you begin from verse, Philippians chapter 4, from the verse, Philippians chapter 4, from the verse 13, uh, no, no, from verse 10, Philippians chapter 4, from verse 10 to 19. He's telling them that, oh, now you are even recognize me again and try to help me. Not that I need anything from you, but anyway, I thank you for helping me. My God, supply all your needs why wouldn't god supply he, all his needs why wouldn't his god supply all his needs but his needs is coming from the members it's the members who are not supplying his need that he's beg, praying my god should supply all your needs meanwhile he has needs and the supply of his needs was coming from the members to him so, if we just make ourselves so big as pastors, apostles, we are not only deceiving ourselves, we are causing damages, damages. Because it is the believers who are supposed to be better. They have the power of God to change things. They have the power of God to bring prosperity. How will Jesus tell the people, when you pray, say this, let your kingdom come, let your will be done here on earth. Why, is this, why didn't Jesus pray that prayer? Why did he tell them to pray that? Because the power, that's how God has designed it. The power of God is in the believers. It is not in the preachers. It is in the believers. That was Paul was telling that God is able to do whatever you say or think according to the power working in you. That was Apostle's prayer. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 14. That was the prayer he was praying. That the people who do the love of God, they say to all God, so that they can speak and bring changes. If the preachers can do that, then they will not waste their time coming and preach to the people to know. 
that you can just pray for them to be safe. That's all. But that is not. So if you are hearing my voice, know that you have to be better than every pastor, every preacher, so that you can save this world and even help these pastors. They shouldn't use curses, pay fears to extract and rob you. No, they should teach the truth to you that look, you are better. You don't have anything. We don't have anything. We are the least among you. We are your servants. So help us. That's how it's supposed to be. Not that kind of cheat and robbery and that kind of evil thing that have been preached and making themselves big and jumping here and there. They are nothing. If they are not telling the church the truth, they will suffer and they will be condemned along. Stay blessed and stay tuned for more.